Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run down new horse towns where the church is the backbone loves in the bow. And the five string melodies groove in. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the South are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah If you'd like to be able to listen to the show without ads and have full access to bonus content, that's an option. To find out how, Please go to MyBigfootSighting.com. My Bigfoot sighting happened in Northern California. However, before I tell you that story, I want to let you guys know what led me to remember my experience of that sighting. And this is what happened. So in 2018... I was living in Savannah, Georgia, and I was working at the airport so that I could fly for free. And I like going to places that what I like to call the ancient people of the land, the Native American people, where they lived, where they did their ceremonial work, where they had their burial grounds. I just like going to places that have really good energy. And so some of my trips, I would go to different places that had multiple experiences on the land, different paranormal experiences, Bigfoot, UFO, the native people live there. And so I listened to this podcast that was interviewing a couple that have a crystal mine in Mena, Arkansas. And I have found out that that area is an area where there's been lots of sightings. So I wanted to go there because I wanted to do some crystal digging and I wanted to go check out an area that had these multiple things going on on the land. At the time, I I really did not have any interest in the topic of Sasquatch Bigfoot when the movie Harry and the Hendersons came out, I really liked that movie. And it made sense to me, like at the end, when they drop him off in the forest and the forest beings kind of come out from behind the trees and he goes with them and then they sort of disappear into the forest. That made sense to me. I'm from Northern California or what people call Northern California. I grew up very close to the Santa Cruz mountains. I've spent years of my life wandering through redwood trees and creeks and picking up salamanders. And I also spent a ton of time in the foothills of the Sierras. I grew up going there. My grandparents had property there. And so very in tune with nature. And so I wanted to go check out this place. I was listening to them being interviewed and it just sounded really interesting. So I get there, I fly there, I get a rental car, I go there. And now the husband is now taking me out into a part of the forest. We first did some where he took me to where the people do the crystal digging and he dug up some crystals for me. And we walked around through the forest and it looks just like a forest, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know, you know, with the crystal mine, if there was going to be like a hole in the ground or like a cave and you just basically start digging on the ground and then you dig down and then there's these crystals. So as we were walking to this area in the forest, it was a really nice day. I think it was mid August, 2018. And he, he starts telling me some things that I had never heard of before. I I was blown away. He told me that the native people, the tribe of that area had asked them 
if they can do their ceremonial work on their land because they consider that land sacred. And I was like right there. I was like, this is my place. This is totally up my alley. And he then started saying that the tribes people started teaching them about the Sasquatch in that area. And he said he was going to be taking me to a place that's called the nursery. And um, what that means, it's basically the saplings. There's this area where there's some smaller trees, smaller saplings, smaller trees growing, smaller branches, littler ones. So we get there. I'm having a hard time. Like I really just kind of not really able to take it all in yet at this moment. I was just listening. And so he starts kind of pointing out to me. He showed me a sapling pulled down with the log placed over the top. He showed me some tree limbs, some that were bent, like they grew where somebody like manipulated them to grow up and then bend to the left. And then, you know, like some sort of strange angled growing little trees and branches. And he showed me where little branches were leaning up against trees and things like this. And I, I had no idea of this before. I was blown away. I mean, that was my first intro to this subject. This very kind, gentle man teaching me this. He said that the tribes people call the Sasquatch the tree people. <laughs> and when he said that, something so deeply resonated inside myself. And it was an experience that's hard to put words to. Me growing up, you know, starting as a baby, being in the mountains, being in the country, wandering through the woods in complete peace. Where I grew up, the Santa Cruz Mountains near Silicon Valley, between the mountains that I grew up in is between Santa Cruz and the town of Saratoga, Cupertino, San Jose, in there. And I have always felt completely at home and at peace in the country and the mountains. And I had a flash of myself walking past a whole bunch of branches like lined up against a tree. Like I've seen that more than a few times in my life earlier in my earlier years, thinking it was like some teenagers doing it or some sort of pagan thing, or maybe the boy scouts or the girl scouts or something. And then I would also see like really big trees, not the redwoods, but these other types of trees that would have long limbs and not oaks. I don't know the name of it, but I would see sometimes as I'd walk past that they were growing at weird angles. And I remember being like an elementary school, it making me think about that. Like that's different as I would walk past, but I had no idea. I had heard throughout my life now and then I'd see like a fast clip on the news of somebody holding a cast of like a big footprint or something. But I I really didn't really give it any thought at all. I knew that there was a, I think I'd been in like when I was young into the museum, the Bigfoot museum that's in Felton, California. I was having experiences on the paranormal realms, spiritual, metaphysical, mystical. That is another topic, but I'm just saying that's where my focus has been throughout my life. So he says the tree people and something shifted in me for the rest of my life after hearing that. So we walked around some more and then he said some TV shows had been out there and they'd seen some really big green orbs that had been low to the ground. And then when they went over there, it it was like these orbs had actually moved leaves away. And so then there were these sort of open spots 
from the orbs moving the leaves away and spots in the forest. So he told me, you know, if you want to, you can just wander around, you can meditate, see what you pick up on. He took me to an area in the forest where there was a bench. He said, some people, if you sit here quietly on the bench and just sort of be peaceful and kind of look around, but sort of also at the same time, maybe kind of a little bit sort of make your eyes go slightly blurry a little bit. So you're not staring so intently, like it's sort of just a peaceful looking that sometimes people will see them coming out of the forest into the meadow where the table was. And he let me know that the tree people know your heart. They like connecting with people who have good hearts. And what that means is inside yourself that you're a good person. They can feel that. They can feel how people are. And I've really spent a lot of my time in my life being a good person, making sure I do the things that I am being a good person or like looking inside myself and make sure I've worked through my things. You know, I've, I've done all that. So that was exciting to like just another level of, wow, wow, I had no idea. So I sat there for a while and then I just decided to then walk into the forest and wander around. And while I was in there, when I go and do something where I'm open to have a a good experience, because you don't know what exactly kind of experience you're going to have, I feel like I just sort of be as tuned in as I can. So while I was out there, all of a sudden I had an experience that I haven't had since I was about seven. And what it was is I heard, well, what, what, how I as best describe it, it was as if my ears suddenly turned up, like as if when you turn up the amp or you turn up the sound and there was a sort of humming and I could really hear really well. And all of a sudden it was just this humming sound. And I had like the sound of ohm is like the primordial sound of silence. A very loud sound of silence is what I heard. But then also I could hear way over in a different part of the forest where the people would dig for the crystals. I could hear them all of a sudden talking like from afar, but I had that experience out there and I hadn't had an experience like that since I was about seven. So I went home, went back to my life, back to Savannah, Georgia. I can't remember if I maybe just didn't think about it for a little bit or what. I can't remember, but I started hiking more, finding the hiking trails, going out into the forest even more going onto the hiking trails. And I went to a place east of Savannah that is a state park. And there's some history out there, Civil War history. So I walked to a part of that state park where the campsites are, where the people have the RV park in the campsites. And I was walking around and then I found like a side trail that will take you to the intracoastal waterway, like a big river. And I'm walking out there and I look up and there is a trunk of a tree in the tree, up in the tree, like, oh my gosh, high, like, uh, I don't know. I'm going to just say 20 feet up in the tree. I don't remember ever seeing anything like that before in my life. How did that trunk of tree get up there? No one's going to put a trunk, like no human is putting that up there. They're they're not going to hire a crane to come put a trunk of a tree perpendicular in a tree. I mean, I'm going to think about all these things. I'm not going to just automatically, because this is new to me. This subject is so new to me at this time. 
it would have to be like tornado weather <laughs> to make something like that happen. So that didn't happen there. So that happened. Okay. So that was a little bit interesting. So a couple months later, a few months later, I went to a different area of Savannah that's on the outskirts and it's kind of on the edge of Fort Hunter Liggett, I think is what it's called, the Army Air Force Base. I went to a nature preserve called Blue Sky, I think is what it was called, Blue Sky Nature Preserve. And you get there off of the a two-lane highway. It's very rural out there, lots of forests, lots of trees, lots of the skinny pines. And then also mixed in with the big oaks with their long reaching limbs. So I'm, I'm walking out there and I'm noticing that it does feel like a nice feeling of nature out there. And I had gone now a few times and there's not a whole lot of trails. There's like five or so separate trails. And I'm on this trail that horseshoes from the parking lot. The parking lot is right next to the highway. So you, you turn into off of the highway into the parking lot. It's like a round, like a, just a parking lot there, dirt parking lot. And you walk straight to get onto a, a trail and then you make a left and that trail horseshoes and hits into a, a part of the highway. And then you can also link it to a trail that is parallel to the highway, but inside the forest. I'd rather be walking inside the forest than on the highway. So I walking around out there on this trail and I'm away from the highway, more into the middle of where the trails are. And I'm looking around me and all of a sudden, I don't know if anyone else has had this experience, but you start feeling something like something feels different in this section of the forest. And there's a lot of these, the skinny, tall pines, the skinny, younger ones. And then there's lots of the deadfall, the older dead, skinny pines that don't have any limbs on them, just like the trunks, the tall trunks. And there's just lots of them on both sides of the trail in the forest. And it's standing out to me for some reason. And I was like trying to make sense of it because I was kind of new to the area. And I'm like, was this caused by a storm? Would a storm, would the wind do this? What would make these trees be like standing up this way and pointing over there that way. So I started really looking around and I started noticing trees, like the long skinny trees, that the ones that they bend over, the ones that are just kind of leaning, they would be leaning. And then another one would be like leaning into it. And then it would be like weaved through each other. And then just the pulled down sapling with the log on top. I just started seeing lots of that stuff in this nature preserve. So the first story that I want to tell you is from 1996. I went on a fishing trip with a boyfriend. I'm from California. We drove from California to the mountains of Idaho we fished along the Locksaw River, and I grew up fishing. I've been doing it since I was three, like holding the little pole with the little fake frog and like flinging it around like on the shore while my dad would fish. So my boyfriend, he, he wanted to be a mountain man. <laughs> so he was learning, you know, how to fish, how to duck hunt. You know, I had also went with him to do that. I had already known since I was a kid how to shoot a gun all types of guns. So we're out there. He kept losing his lures and <laughs> getting his like his line all, I guess it's called like bird's nest, you know, when it becomes like a big old knot. <laughs> and I was just minding my own business because I was just 
totally enjoying myself. It's just, I'm fine with being out in the middle of nature, in the middle of the wilderness. I feel right at home. So we're out there and he says that it's a, it's a really nice day. This day, by the way, it was like a summer day. I don't know, 75 degrees and very nice day. And he wanted to go to the store to get more lures. And it was going to be like a 25 mile drive, he said. And I didn't want to go. I wanted to stay out there. And we were on a mountain road all day. Not one car went by where we were at. So we stopped along the road. There was a river 30 feet down this levee. And on that levee was a lot of small boulders that you would see along a levee a lot of the times along a river. So it was like that, these small boulders or big rocks, whatever you want to call them. So I knew that I was going to have about an hour to myself out there. And I do have a background in studying outdoor skills. I was in the park management program and then, you know, growing up, from a very young age, being very into reading the Ranger Rick magazines, really understanding about nature and animals and what they do and what they don't do and all that stuff. So he leaves. I'm sitting on one of the rocks. And so I'm about a fourth of the way down towards the river. And I decided I'm going to look around me, make sure I see, get my bearings turn around behind me and on the other side of the road is a very, very tall, just embankment, like, I don't know, a cliff face. And it goes up like, I don't know, let's say 30 yards, something like that, maybe 20 yards, somewhere in there. And then on the top of that, it's just trees. This is all you can see thick with pines and just very thick pine forest. So then I look, turn around in front of me and this will happen like really quick. This, this experience is it all happened really quick. I turned to look in front of me and I'm looking at the river. It's a deep part of the river, dark colored. It's moving kind of slow. And then it's probably about 40 feet across to the other side of the river. And on the other side of the river is this amazing, flat, perfectly pristine sand beach. And the beach was about, I don't know, like, I'm going to say it wasn't like, I always use a, the measurement of yards or football fields, <laughs> you know, trying to describe distance as best as I can. So let's say, I don't know. I guess halfway is, is 50 yards. So let's say it's, it's about 50 yards wide, the speech and like 40 feet going from the water to the tree line is like the measurement of the sand beach in the very back of the sand beach. If you were at the water and went straight to the tree line midway in the middle of the speech was a very tall, skinny, very big boulder. So this, this happens really quick. You're looking around and you see all this. And then I noticed on the left side of this sand beach, nothing else except these footprints, really big footprints. And at the time in my mind, I think I was imagining them going from the tree line to the water. I'm not sure. I just know that there was a whole line of footprints. And at that time in my life, I think I was like 26 at the time. I wasn't thinking of Bigfoot whatsoever. So bear, those are bear tracks. That was what I was thinking. So my eyes saw that I'm processing bear tracks. And then all of a sudden, I hear coming up in the trees and this, it was a steep slope, uh, not like 
A person could walk it, but it was a steep slope angling the elevation up. We were like down in like a canyon. I hear a tree snap. Now, just the other day, I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about this. And it has been another putting a puzzle piece into my experiences that have been so helpful. So I have learned already that they can mimic owls and coyotes and things like that. But learning yesterday or the day before that they can make the sound of tree snaps. But in my experience, it was a loud snap. And it just, it was like the only sound at all in the entire little canyon there. It was so loud. And then I was hearing like this sort of like bushes or trees, like swaying back and forth sound. I think my eyes were probably like bugging out of my head because I was just staring intently at the area up there where I thought it was coming from. It was like wherever that, that tall boulder on the other side, in the middle of the sand, at the tree line, it was like kitty corner to the left about 50 yards up. It was just like right there. And I was thinking that I was going to start seeing a bear come down through the trees. You couldn't see the ground at all. It was so thick of trees. I was thinking I was going to see a bear come down and I was a little bit concerned about that. And then all of a sudden, it was like I processed that I was okay. And then it was like, I let it go. I forgot about it. I just somehow time went by. I don't even remember when my boyfriend showed back up. It was such a non-event. I remember showing him, look across those footsteps. I took a couple pictures with my disposable camera. (laughs) That was a big deal back then, those disposable cameras. (laughs) I don't have the pictures anymore. I lost a lot of my pictures years ago. But so as I've been listening to the stories and my experiences that I've been having, I feel that because they are so in tune, their senses are so heightened that he was watching me from over there and probably knowing what I was thinking and saw that I looked behind me. I was looking around me, making sure I knew where I was. I was being safe with myself, watched my eyes look across because it was so quick. It was like my eyes saw the steps and then all of a sudden tree snap. So I feel that he was letting me know I'm right here. That's me. I did that. Those are my steps. Not to scare me, not to be threatening at all. Just to say I'm here. And when I had that realization, I like got some tears in my eyes because I really do enjoy connecting to the non-physical and connecting to nature. So that was in 1996. So the other one, this is the one that is my sighting. and. It was my I saw a bear story for a lot of years. And as I was putting the pieces together, after I remembered this experience, more and more of a realizing what I saw really came into focus. And so this is what happened. It was in 2005, and I was living in a town called Roseville, California, and it's Northern California. I went mountain biking with a a guy that I was just starting to see like dating and he had a mountain bike too. So we were out mountain biking and it was fun. 
And these trails are, the trails are cut into the sides of these mountains. You, you're on single track trails, which means they're skinnier trails. This part of the trail was very foresty inside the forest. And I was first. He was, I don't know, like maybe a couple minutes behind me. And it was a trail that this section of the trail was a gentle sloping, um, rolling hills sort of type trail. And so I was coming around a, a left curve. And so I come around this curve and all of a sudden this something ran in front of me. And I'm not saying it was so close that I had to swerve, but it was about, I don't know, 10, no, like 15, 20 feet in front of me, maybe. It went in front of me from right to left across this trail. It had very thick, very, very, very thick, coarse, wavy hair for hair. And it was like reddish brown. So imagine that there is a fur rug laying on your floor next to your fireplace. Okay. So you pick it up and you're only holding one side. So the other side is, is hanging down. So imagine that I saw like a fur rug fly across the trail. It was going very fast. And so one of my puzzle pieces was I was watching a video of these guys following a grizzly bear that was running. And I think that it was saying that they were going 40 miles per hour. But that is like building up speed to go 40 miles per hour. This moved kind of like a bird, just, just quickly darted across the trail. But then at the same time, I was able to have this such clear view of this moment of seeing the detail in the fur. It really stood out. But in my mind, again, what else could it be but bear? I I had no, no other thoughts at that moment. So now that I know. Okay. So let me try to describe the size of this fur rug. (laughs) So I'm going to say it was about three and a half, four feet long and about three feet with the height of it. And this is what happened. There was no arms or legs or head. It was just the midsection. And then there was no sound of an animal running through the crunching leaves or sound. There was no sound after that. It was just a quick go across me in front of the trail. And then there was this lingering scent. And it was like a horsey, musky-like scent. And it just sort of just hung in the air a little bit. And in my life, I had never smelled anything like that while I was out in the woods. And I've been, I've been going out into the woods, the country, the mountains since I was a baby. I've been around horses and it kind of had a slight scent like that. This sort of, I think it was kind of like a pheromone kind of scent. So that triggered, I, I had that flashback of that. I was, and again, I was like, Oh my God. And so the more and more I've gotten into this subject and I feel like, you know, it made sense to me now that I have been, you know, putting this all together that I feel that, you know, before realizing, I mean, I saw a partially materialized Bigfoot. That's what it was. They have to be interdimensional. 
They have to be able to cloak. This is the things I was thinking about, like even before I realized, wait a second, I had that experience. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to saying when I was standing in the forest, I was in 2019 and I went out to the blue sky preserve out off trail and I call it being around the gazebo, but it was just little trees, um, not little trees, but under the trees in this area that felt like where people gathered or they gathered maybe. And I started talking out loud to the space. And that's something that I've learned anyways from, you know, the native people, the shamans and the the medicine people just gathering information about, you know, and then maybe they're right in front of me and I just don't know it. So I'm going to just speak out loud and say some things. And also I'm very connected to nature. I will go up and I will feel drawn to go over to a tree and I will touch the tree and I will acknowledge the tree and say hi and thank you. And, and I will leave a a hair as an offering and say, thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for, it's like almost like saying, thank you for allowing me to be here. This is amazing. And then I feel a feeling of appreciation and all that kind of stuff. So Shortly after that, I started hearing vocals. I started hearing the owls and I, you can't see me, but I'm doing quotes when I say owls. And so, you know, I had a lot of experiences in 2019. I have a friend that lives about a half hour away in this town called Ella Bell, Georgia. He lives in the country and he's on land where He has eight acres and then his cousin has eight acres. And a lot of family, his family has land out there. So there's just a lot of land. It's very pretty and peaceful. You can see the stars and there's a river nearby. I can't remember the name of the river, possibly the Ogeechee. But actually I wanted to say where I was at the Blue Sky Preserve, the Ogeechee River is not too far from there too. Okay, so I would go out to my friends and I would do some wanderings around out there. And I started seeing the tree structures out there too. And I was blo- I was just blown away. I'm like, this is amazing. I feel like I'm in a dream. You hear people's stories and then you start experiencing these things. And it just is amazing. So I'm out there having fun, wandering around. And so there's a neighbor that lives on my friend's brother's part of his property, his eight acres. And he's living in a camper trailer out there. And I would see him ride by on his motorcycle. I'm a friendly person. I like to say hi to people. And so one day he finally rode up on his motorcycle while we were out on his sister's land doing some stuff for her. And we start talking and I asked him if he's had any experiences out on the land because I had found out that this land has different things that have been on it. The native people lived there. There's a burial somewhere. They don't know where a burial, like an Indian mound is. They're not sure where it is, but it's somewhere around. There was a plantation there. There were the slaves quarters closer to the water. So, you know, I'm like really into the paranormal side of things too. So I was wanting to know, you know, if he had any experiences. And so he said, yes, he had that. He was hearing sometimes knocking on his door at night. And I'm like, really? So the investigator in me, the person that wants to go and ask a zillion questions to this person now kicked in and I'm going to figure out how I can go ask him lots of questions again and again and again. (laughs) So I waited until another day and went back out to my visit my friends on his land. And while I was out there, I heard an owl. And just in general, hearing an owl call is really neat. I I, I, I love nature. I, and so being from California, now moving over to the east, more of the east coast side, 
hearing different animals, seeing different animals. It's, it's really fun. So I'm, I'm hearing an owl doing, he did a call. He did like one call. And then I heard like, I'm going to say like a response call in a totally different area from that first call. And there was something in me that peaked that little, hmm, for some reason, that sound made me go, hmm. <laughs> so I kind of just filed that away. And I decided a couple of days after that to go knock on this neighbor's door and see if I could ask him some questions about his experience, this knocking on the door thing that see if he will talk more. So he started, you know, I was trying to figure out, is this possibly Bigfoot or is this just a, is this a spirit? So we're, we're standing outside and we're in the forest. We're in a, you know, we're in the country and there's oak trees around like the smaller oak trees. There's big oak trees, pines here and there. And it's starting to kind of be at the time of day where it's right before dusk. It was a summer time or maybe like September, maybe August, September. The insects and the trees were starting to sing and the sun it was still the sun was up, but it was the beginnings of dusk. And he's standing like, I don't know, let's say 10 feet in front of me. We're just standing in front of each other talking. And all of a sudden, I heard what I call the man yell. <laughs> and it was this like male deep voice do like one, and I'm going to do it. So <laughs> don't laugh at me, but I'm just trying to, as best as I can, it, it describe. So it's kind of like, ah, oh, like that. And when that happened, <laughs> the guy, <laughs> looked at me like, what was that? <laughs> and when he looked at me like that, a guy who lives out there who would know all the sounds of the forest, he looked at me like that. And I was like, wow, we just heard something. But I stayed poker face, just like I pretended I didn't hear it. And where it was coming from was one of the cousin's properties, I'm going to say you would say like, let's say a five minute walk from where we were. And it was their hunting camp. And that season they decided to go camp or do their hunting in a totally different part of the state. So they were not there. There was no one there. They did keep up their tarps and their you know, there was a shed over there and, you know, some things over there, but there was no people in that area for a very long amount of time, like space, lots of acres of just land where that, the man yell <laughs> came from. So that just was so fun to me. I'm like, wow. Okay. I just heard that. So I finished conversation with him and I went home. So Time goes by, days go by, and I'm in my neighborhood, and I live in an area of Savannah called Berwick, and it's in a really nice suburbs area, and there's different suburbs that connect to each other, and the suburb, like the neighborhood that I am in, it's really nice. There's nice grass and sidewalks. It's very peaceful. People drive slow. It's a nice friendly community. And there's a pond, a nice big pond behind the neighborhood that has grass all the way around it. You can walk back there. There's forest that you can walk in. And then if you keep going in the forest, then the forest hits into acres and acres of wetlands, protected wetlands. So it's a very an area where there will be never any building back there. And I would go back there and I started seeing a couple of the 
saplings pulled down and the logs placed over the top. And I was like, no way. (laughs) Right here, like by my neighborhood. This is, wow, this is amazing. So went out there a few times, saw that and walking around the neighborhood. I have a parrot and I walk her with me on my shoulder, hold her sometimes. I have my dog. She's with me a lot. And I start talking to a neighbor and that neighbor lives where her backyard hits into the wetlands part of that neighborhood there. And she was talking about loving hearing the owls. And I was like, oh, really? Interesting. Owls over here, huh? Hmm. Okay. That's good to know. So I don't know, a couple days after that or so, I'm out in the backyard and In that area, people have these screened-in porches. It's really nice to be able to sit outside in your own little screened-in porch. And I'm out there. And all of a sudden, I hear the man yell. (laughs) I cannot believe it. (laughs) I mean, where I heard it is like coming from the forest that's behind where this pond is. And it's this sort of space of forest between our complex and then like a, an apartment complex. So I was tripping out because, you know, again, I was, maybe it's just a dude out there, but it was the same exact like tone and length of the vocal and that sort of thing. So that was just, in an unusual experience <laughs> to hear that. And that was also, you know, around the same time frame. It's just these different things really were happening quick. So then in October of 2019, I went camping up to upstate South Carolina at Paris Mountain State Park. And I went up there, I drove up there because I wanted to go on an interview at a children's dental office. So I decided that it was like a, you know, up into South Carolina. So I decided that I'll stay the night, I'll camp. And so I realized I did not want to work at this dental office. So I pulled her and canceled that, but I'm like, I'm going to still go camping. So I purposely looked at the map of where the campsite is and picked an area that was closest to where there was just nature and no buildings around or, you know, that sort of thing. So the third night I was there, my campsite had the cement driveway where you park your car And then off the cement in the dirt was where the picnic bench was. And on the side of this driveway where my truck was parked, off of the cement was a downhill slope that went down to the road that you could drive to go up to the trails. So... All that was out there was that road that took you up to the trails and up farther was a couple cabins and just land and a couple little lakes and the river, a a creek. So it was the same type of the evening where the sun was starting to decide to have dusk and twilight, you know, the sun was just kind of starting to go down and the insects were coming out and it was another one of those perfect evenings and the, the the insects were super happy. They were singing and I heard an owl do his vocal and I'm going to try to describe this as best as I can. So I heard a specific owl species like, ooh, 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 ah, like that one, do a vocal. And then I heard like 
a response call come way in the opposite direction, like at another point in the forest. And then I heard a different like species of owl do its call in another completely different point. And then its return call. So now it's like north, south, east, west, these calls. And I just thought that was very interesting. And at that time, you know, the more I've been telling my stories and the more people are giving me little tidbits information, it's been like more and more just, I mean, I know I had the experience, but it's really fun when, when people tell you little things like, oh, they don't do that. Like elves don't do that. <laughs> this kind of thing. So I'm standing by my car. The sun is now down. It's dark out there. It was like one of those no moon nights. And all of a sudden, going out from my campsite, up in the trees, okay, that area that I was saying that's next to my car is this downhill slope and the, those tall, skinny pines is what was in that area there. So all of a sudden, the owl sounds, the owl calls are now in the trees next to my campsite. And it was like four to five owl calls. Ooh, ooh, like kind of like that. And then inside those calls, I heard a few of these like primate e primal man like vocaling and and it, it it all of a sudden it was like i felt drawn towards the sound and i was blown away at this moment as it's happening like whoa so there was nowhere i could go i mean if i kept going i would have gone downhill not not closer, I would have gotten farther from where they were. They were up in the trees. So just recently also, I learned that owls don't group together like that. <laughs> so that was just really an extra fun little knowing that, wow, wow, wow. And then it's kind of like, are they invisible? Or are they, you know, who, like, what is that? What's doing that? So that was neat. And then right after it happened, I do not know why. Oh, I know why. I remember. I needed to tell someone. I was like, oh my God, I got to tell someone about this experience. I got to tell someone. Who can I tell? Who, who can I tell right now? Who, who's available? <laughs> so a guy that I had posted on my YouTube channel is called Exploring the Paranormal with Trisha Brown, where I tell my interesting paranormal and Bigfoot. I post my videos there. Well, this man who lives in Savannah saw my post where I'm talking about some of my Bigfoot stories or that first one about what I told you guys earlier about my lead in to the experiences and going to Mena, Arkansas and all that. So I told him about this place, this big sky preserve. So we would go out there together and do our own little fun little research stuff out there. It was fun. So I called him to tell him what just happened. So, okay, before I talked to him, I wanted to check my voicemail for some reason. I do not know why. <laughs> so I pushed my code on my phone, on my smartphone. I have an Android. And there's a pause before the first new message will start. Well, all of a sudden... I'm listening on my phone and I hear a man's voice in sort of a, a voice that sounds sort of like an advertising call. A man's voice says renegade. And it just, it was one of those, again, those moments that you're like, whoa, what was that? I hung up my phone and then I started going through all my messages. I went through every single message, listen to it. Nope. Delete. Listen to that. Nope. Not there. Not there. Delete, delete, delete. And then here it's going to start playing the new message. And it wasn't there. It was not on my new message. So 
I thought it's very interesting that right next to each other were these two experiences. At first, I thought they are completely unrelated. Like, was that a spirit or a spirit guide or is it a Sasquatch talking to me? <laughs> I have no idea. I just know that it happened and uh, it was very interesting, renegade. And it kind of makes sense. I feel like whoever that was, was calling me a renegade because I'm kind of a rebel. I'm a person that likes to do what I want to do. <laughs> so that happened. That was that story. That's that experience. You know, this, the vocalings, like all of a sudden they're right there, you know, up in the trees by my camp area. That was very interesting. Like they were coming to check me out or something coming to say, Hey, I, I, I'm not sure. So that was in October of 2019. So in, gosh, when was it? November of that same year. So a month later or so, maybe it was December. I went backpacking with a group. We started off in Northern Georgia in a town called Clayton, I think is the name of the town. And there's a museum there. And I would see a Bigfoot statue there. So apparently there's been, you know, lots going on in that area with Sasquatch. So we're backpacking up in there. I'm not sure where I was exactly. I don't know if at the time we were in North Georgia or if we were in Southern North Carolina, but we were up in the wilderness out there and we were training to be wilderness field instructors for the adolescent age group, like 13 to 18, and then the young adult groups, which were like 18 to 25. So we were learning how to, you know, what it's like to the whole process that the kids, you know, are taken through. So we were setting up our shelters with the tarps hanging like a tent structure sort of hanging in the trees. And we we had all our the area that we were going to sleep in this section of, of the forest. And I was in a different section for a little bit. And I came back over to where people were setting up their shelters and I heard them saying that they had heard the owls. And I'm like, mm, you heard the owls. No way. That's amazing. Yay. So that night I heard what was like canines barking, but they sound a little different. Didn't sound, it's like a little different than dogs barking. And it was a little different than coyote. It was definitely not, that's not coyote. I mean, I know coyotes. I've been around, I've heard coyotes. That was interesting. That was a first. I was like, hmm, okay. So a couple of nights, we start, we got on our backpack trip. We're hiking away. We're now in a totally different area. We're near the Appalachian Trail at this point. I didn't know it at the time. So again, I don't remember, I don't know if we were in North Carolina at this point. We were done for the night. We put a long tarp on the ground. We were about 20 of us and we're all just sleeping next to each other on this long tarp. And it was like right when we went to bed, all of a sudden out in a tree, not far from where we are. I'll call, I'll call like four or five of them doing vocals right in this tree. And then inside those calls were these primate like calls. And I'm like, wow, really? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And no one else seemed to notice, or I don't know, did, did everyone fall asleep that fast? I mean, that tripped me out too. When I think about that, am I only hearing this? Um, are they just so not tuned in? I don't know, but that happened. So then I moved to Montana. I was on a long road trip in 2020. I escaped Georgia. I packed up my things and I did a road trip across the States. And my plan was to go to Canada, to British Columbia, to be living 
there in a house and then get paid to take people out on the Bigfoot expeditions. So I was supposed to cross over and go into Canada the end of June. So I had some time. So I get to Montana. There's a town called Fortine, F-O-R-T-I-N-E, and then Eureka, Montana. So I stayed in that area for six months. And I was waiting for the time to come for me to cross the border. I I couldn't get across the border. I never was able to get across the border at that time because the border was closed because of the quarantine. So it was in June. I wanted to go camping. So I went to Fortine, this town, this little town, Fortine. It's very, I mean, we are out there. It's like an hour drive to get to Kalispell, to get to the nearest like big town, to go where the store, the big stores are, the the mall and all that. It was an hour drive. So we were that far out there, very small towns out there. And no one's out there. It's a very Canadian tourist area and they couldn't get across the border. And a lot of people were not coming outside. I was, I was like, I want to be outside. Oh my gosh. It was very clear air and it was spring and early summer and the wildflowers were out and the animals were out. It was just amazing. I, I felt very fortunate to be able to do that. So I went camping at this little lake and I was the only one there. There was like five campsites and you know, the primitive camping. But then there was like, um, um, I think there was one like outhouse type bathroom in this area, but that's it. And there were fire pits and the forest service, you know, when they would cut down the whatever, you know, extra trees or the trees that needed to be moved away from the campsites, they would leave them in piled next to the fire pit so that you could use the fire or you could use the fire pit. So I did that. And so this night, you know, I I did the car camping this night and I just put my seats down in my Toyota 4Runner and I put a couple pads down and I just sleep in the back. So I was ready to go to bed and I'm laying in my sleeping bag and all of a sudden, and this is, you know, nighttime, you know, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say it could be 11 at night could be 12. It could be 10. I'm not sure. I heard the man yell. (laughs) And it was like, if you're staring at, if you, if you imagine yourself at a, at a small lake, you're, you're standing at the lake and on the left side of the lake back all in there is forest service roads, logging roads, good elevation up and down. I'm in the, I'm in the mountains, just land over there. That's it. Trees, forest, birds, squirrels, <laughs> just, and possibly a, a, if it was a different time of the year, a bear, that's it out there. So I hear the man yell. And then I heard a return in a different a section, like a whole nother direction, a return call, the same man yell sound. <laughs> and then since I'd been learning, okay, I'm going to think out loud in my mind, like I'm going to say out loud in my mind to them, please do not come over here and look in the window. (laughs) I do not want to see you. Don't do that. (laughs) Don't freak me out. (laughs) I mean, I didn't want to like, you know, when you're just tapping your eyes, look up and then you look out and then there's some like face peering at you. No. So I said that and then I, but I slept Like I kind of kept the blankets over my face and that was that I was, I don't know. I I just, it's like, I just adding on to the experiences and I'm tripping out. I'm wow. I'm amazed that I'm having these experiences that that they're happening. You know, like listening to all these people's stories and I'm, I'm hearing this. Okay. So that was June in August at that time I was, getting to borrow a camper trailer 
and live at this RV park. And I was the only one there for like a few months, a couple months. I was the only one there. And it was an amazing RV park. So I was enjoying that. Wow, how fun. You know, like I remember thinking earlier in the year, like, what would that be like? You know, people who do that, they travel and they're trailer and then they find a killer spot and then they hook up and they just have their little home in that spot. And so I was getting to do that. It was really fun. So August 4th, 2020, that's my birthday. And I decided I was going to take myself and my animals with me, my parrot and my dog on a nice hike to this part of the Tobacco River. So you walk along a trail that was railroad tracks and the tobacco river will weave itself close to the trail and away from the trail. And so I got to the spot that I wanted to go down the embankment and down to this part of the river where on one side was like dry river bed where there's a lot of those. It's a flat area where all the river rocks, the smooth river rocks. And it was in like this S turn of this skinnier part of the river. And by this time of year, the water was farther down. So I was like thinking to myself, I might have missed my chance to float in a tube or a air mattress down the river. Maybe I could get in and out, you know, depending. So I had my, what is called a crazy Creek chair, which is one of those flat chairs that you can fold up or you can lay it out flat and lay on it, or you can like hook it up and then you can sit in it. I brought that, my book, I brought a beer and my water and my animals. So I was just going to go and just enjoy myself at the river, at the creek, that section. And on the other side of the creek, right across from me was a flat area, but it was up a little embankment and then, you know, land, trees, forest. And to my left, there was a tall embankment that went up to a ridge. And then behind me, you know, there was, you know, the flat river rock. But then if you kept looking farther behind me was another little forest down in there. I was all by myself. It was a nice day. And it was, I don't know what time of day it was, maybe like, let's say two o'clock. And I was not there for very long. I'm just going to say that. So I put my things down, found a good spot that I wanted to be right by the river. And I sat down, opened my book. My book was about interdimensional Sasquatch. Okay. I was reading about that. It's a really interesting book. I look over to my right upstream on the other side of the river. I saw it looked like a beaver or maybe an otter. I couldn't tell because of the way it was facing me and it was kind of moving around a little bit. I'm like, oh, wow, look at that. It's, how cool is that? So I was looking at it for a little while. And then I looked down for a little bit or looked over at my bird or something. And then I looked back and then it was gone. So I thought, oh, okay, probably went up into the tall grass and, and left. And then I started hearing snorting behind me. I got to really have some great interaction with deer, mountain goats, I saw the ram, you know, the ones with the curly, the rams, I guess, the mountain goats that have the round horns, you know what I'm talking about. I saw those guys. It was amazing. So I was hearing the snorting behind me and I turn and there's a deer. So by this time now, who I am in my life is I talk to the animals and I say, hi, and I introduce myself. I'm Trisha. Hi. Hi. This is Manny, my bird. This is my dog, Lucy. And then I will mimic them a little bit. So he's snorting. So I'm kind of mimicking his the snorting. 
And then he was just kind of standing there. And then I just thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just turn back around and sit back down while he's still standing there. That's okay. He can still stand there. I don't mind. He was probably about, I don't know, 20 yards away from me. So I opened my book, starting to read. And then all of a sudden I hear a little kaplunk sound in the water, kind of near where that otter was. So I look over and I'm thinking that I'm going to see a little head swimming around over there. And I'm looking over there and I'm looking and looking and looking, looking in the water, looking in the water, look, nothing. It's just water. It's just the, the little current. And I'm like, wow, okay, that's interesting. So I go back, sitting down, reading. All of a sudden, there is a giant splash right out in front of me. No joke. Like a rock the size of like, I don't know. I didn't see the rock, but I'm guessing bigger than a softball, but somewhere in that range. Splash. It, it stood me up like that, man. Boing. I stood up. Whoa. What just did that? <laughs> so I'm like, looking around and I'm looking around and there was, there's no one out there and no human could throw a rock that far from the trail where I came from and land it the way that it landed. Like I could tell that it landed like in a straight down ish. So it was either like tossed from afar like lobbed to land perfectly in that spot. Or maybe it was like on the other side of the bank and just sort of dropped it right in. And I can't see them. I don't know. And then, you know what? I started feeling a little like, hmm, ah, this was weird. This is weird. This is a little bit different. And so, you know, in my years of having experiences, when I've seen a spirit or something. And then later on, I think, why didn't I say hi or like, talk to the spirit? It's, you know, when you have an experience, it's so sudden and you're kind of like in shock and you're like, whoa. So I remembered. And so I said out loud, am I bothering you? Um, do you, do you want me to go? Um, is it okay that I'm here? You know, this, this kind of stuff. So then I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to, so I said, can I watch you do that again? We do that again. Can I see, you know, something like that. So I waited a couple seconds, just, just only a couple seconds. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go. So I look down to start picking up my things. And all of a sudden, splash, there goes the third rock. That one also in the same spot as the second rock. And I looked up in time to see like the down displacement of the water and then the spray of the rock. And I'm like, whoa, okay, we're going to go. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I just didn't know. So I thought, I I'm just, we're going to go. <laughs> so in my gathering information, you know, putting it out there. This was my experience and hearing different people say in my mind, you know, because of my different experiences, now that I'm having these experiences with possibly the Sasquatch people, I mean, I've had experiences with spirits where I've been left objects in that area of land too. The ancient people of the land lived in that area. So maybe it was an ancient spirit, nature spirit or an ancient spirits, you know, letting me know it's there. I don't know. Maybe it was a, a juvenile. Uh, maybe they were playing with me. You know, that's kind of like what I was thinking. And then recently hearing a podcast and this person was kind of in her thoughts. She says in her thoughts that if you have the smaller rocks kind of thrown near you, it means, you know, this. And then if it's the bigger rocks, it means that, you know, like, you know, whatever. So to me, you know, when she was mentioning that the bigger rocks 
like the medium sized rocks. And I was imagining like the kind that were thrown. But the first one, I think it was a little kaplunk. That was a little rock. I think that was a little rock, like getting my attention. So then these second bigger rocks. So she was saying that, and this is what I feel. This is what I feel it is now that I heard what she had to say, that they were maybe letting me know to leave. Maybe there was a bear nearby. Maybe they were trying to let me know that I should probably go now because I don't know, like they maybe were helping me. That That's how I feel. I feel like it was definitely not to be mean, not to be hurtful, to maybe play with me, to mess with me a little bit, or because I had been saying, I want to know you, I want to learn about you, I want to experience you. And so maybe they were just doing that. But you know what? That was pretty, pretty neat. I don't think ever in my life I had ever had anything like that before. So I left, (laughs) got all my things together and my animals and got back up on the trail and went home. So that was in August of 2020. So when I was living there in Eureka, Montana, then the snow started to come and I was like, okay, I it's time for me to figure out plan B because I'm not going to be able to go over to Canada. I was like really excited to get to go do that, like bring my spiritual side to things and get to go to the Canadian wilderness and have experiences out there and participate in that. So I was like, okay, where am I going next? So I have a friend that is in Pensacola, Florida. So I drove all the way back across to go live at his place for a while. And that was really nice for me to have some time to just be like, oh, okay, I'm away from the big cold and the snow. And there was only so many places to live in that little town and only so many jobs and that sort of thing. So I was in Pensacola until about five months ago. And so I moved to where I'm at now, which is Helena, Alabama. It's about 20 minutes south of Birmingham, like in the middle of the state. I wanted to be back up into higher you know, elevation. It's not like a high elevation, high, high elevation, but at least there's hills here and some ups and downs and hiking trails and mountain bike trails. There's fresh water here, lots of trees. I, I'm loving it. So not long after I got here, I heard from a guy that lives here that there has been sightings and experiences at the Cahaba River. And I live not far from this river. And I was like, okay, yay, because not much was going on with me and seeing anything when I was in the Pensacola area. I think I saw like one little thing that I was like, hmm, you know, in the forest, like a little weaving of something, but that's it. (laughs) So it was really nice knowing that where I was living, that was one of the reasons too. I wanted to be back living where connecting with the tree people. So I found out like about 20 minutes from where I live is a place called the Cahaba River park and lots of hiking mountain biking trails. It's awesome. And there's like the rolling hill type of mountain bike trails. You can go up and away from the river. You can be close to the river. So there's this one trail I had heard about that goes along the Cahaba river and it's called peaceful, easy feeling (laughs) rolling hills. And this one day, About, I'm going to say three months ago, I was walking out there with my dog and my parrot and occasionally a person would ride by on their mountain bike. And then there was like a family that went by like, I don't know, three kids, the mom and the dad. And then the mom was, you know, the last one, she went past me. And then there was a a space where it was, again, just me walking out there by myself. And I knew because I had been out there now uh, more than a few times, I knew that I was getting closer to where I was, where my car was parked. And I'm in a part of the forest. I'm under the trees and it's more flat. 
my dog walks kind of slow. She's older. She's 17. So she still comes with us, but she walks slow. So she was behind us a little ways away. This section of the forest was not that far from the river. Like I could look through the trees and see the river. And these trees were also the type of tree that was tall and skinnier, really tall trees and skinny trees in this this section of the forest. I all of a sudden realized that I was hearing something falling from very high and like ricocheting off trees and then landing with a thud on the ground. And at first I was like, is that like a seed pod maybe? But it was this happening like three times, four times. And then I realized those are rocks, like small rocks being thrown from a very high down through the trees, hitting against the trees, ricocheting off the trees and falling on the ground. And then while I was hearing that happening, I realized I was hearing like this sort of hollow thudding sound coming from the river. So it occurred to me, those are rocks and that I felt like they were being thrown from the other side of the river very high and then aimed down around us, landing near us. And so I just sort of said, yelled out loud, hey, stop throwing the rocks, you know, like kind of in a playful way. And then they stopped. (laughs) And then I thought, oh, I better introduce myself. (laughs) So I'm like yelling out to the space, I'm Trisha and that's Manny and that's Lucy. Hi, (laughs) you know, type thing. So at first when I was hearing this sort of hollow sound, I was imagining that it was maybe a kayak. Like, you know, it was like a sort of a hollow, like hard plastic sound hitting against something. So I thought, Maybe it's like a kayak hitting into a rock or something, but there was nothing over there. And so then I thought that sounded like drumming. It was like I was hearing drumming at the same time as I was hearing these rocks coming down through the trees. So again, was that native spirits doing it? Was it, I don't know, (laughs) but you hear a lot about rocks being thrown and it was like, you know, what they say it was near us, but not aimed at us. It was seemed very good aim, very deliberate. Maybe it was like letting me know that they were there. I was very excited, you know, after the experience happened, you know, yay, you know, yay, we're continuing our interaction. They're continuing, you know, to let me know that they're there, which made me very happy. And so I'm finding little tree manipulation things in a neighborhood, my neighborhood trail. And then a couple days ago, I went to a state park. I think it's called Tana Hill. I think that's how you pronounce it. Lots of history there. Lots of civil war history there. And I was walking on this part of the trail that's called the slaves quarters. And then back in the 1830s, 40s, 50s, 60s, the wagons would go back and forth there. There was shops there. There was ironworks there. Really neat place to go explore. So as I was coming back, going back down the same trail that's called the slaves quarters trail. I notice in the forest that there is near each other broken off skinny dead trees broken down 
Like it's still connected, but broken down and then leaning against a tree. There was like three of those right next to each other. And then there was a small trunk of a tree, a skinny one that was broken down, but still hanging down there. Like I've seen those before too, where they, they just will bend it down, but it'll just stay hanging there. So just there was something about that little part of the forest. It just seemed too not from nature. So I will be going back to do more exploring in that area. And I'm going to start asking, because I've asked the rangers and the people who work there, you know, about the paranormal experiences. There's ghost stories there, but I'm going to go back and ask if anyone's had any sightings in this location. And I'm also going to reach out to the Alabama and paranormal group and ask them if they know anything about that area. I haven't had a chance yet to ask. So those are my experiences and that is my Bigfoot sighting. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow And the five-string melodies grooving With the farmland rows where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah